Outlander is a historical drama television series produced by STARS in association with Sony Pictures Television and adapted from a series of novels written by Diana Gabaldon. The show primarily follows the adventures of an accidental time traveler, Claire, who is transported back in time from the 1940s to the year 1743. Due to her skills as a combat nurse and atypical upbringing and education, she's able to adapt to her new environment and survive. Ultimately, she develops a relationship with the show's secondary protagonist, Jamie, an 18th century Scottish Highlander whose family heritage promises more than meets the eye. Although, to be fair, the show spends a lot of time focusing on what does meet the eye. The two fall hopelessly in love, and the majority of the show then follows their romantic arc across the highlands to Paris and back in the years leading up to and following the Jacobite Rising of 1745. Outlander's become well known for its sexual drama and the rich characterization of its protagonists, also for creating one of the most genuinely disturbing but complexly human villains that's ever been written for television. But aside from a dash of black powder action, some historical drama, and a lot of sex, is there more to Outlander than a soppy romance story written about a time-traveling bourgeois nurse? The answer is yes, a lot more, but maybe not in the way that you would think. If you're not familiar with the channel, I talk a lot about the social sciences. I myself am a social anthropologist and qualitative researcher. And with that background, in re-watching Outlander, there was a feeling that I simply couldn't shake. And that's that Outlander, in its first two seasons, is a very ethnographic show. You could use it to teach the fundamentals of ethnography to almost anyone. And that's my plan for this series, to use scenes from Outlander to teach the core theories and methods of ethnographic research. If you're a little hazy on what ethnography is, we'll get to that in a moment. But if you understand the concept well, you might find yourself asking, Hey, wait a minute, how can a piece of fiction be ethnographic? To which I would answer, yep, that, that is the title of the video. In a nutshell, ethnography doesn't really have a single well-agreed-upon definition, but broadly speaking, it refers to a qualitative research method and a type of academic writing that emerged in late 19th and early 20th century anthropology. Early ethnographers got off the porch, as Bronislaw Malinowski was fond of saying, and began living in the cultures that they wanted to study, generally outside the sphere of Western civilizations, in order to document and interpret the beliefs, values, and material lives of individuals in very different cultural worlds. The ethnographer begins as an outsider, and over time, through participant observation and other methods, uh, gradually becomes more of an insider in a community. To quote Hammerstein and Atkinson, the ethnographer participates overtly or covertly in people's daily lives for an extended period of time, watching what happens, listening to what is said, and or asking questions through informal and formal interviews. In fact, gathering whatever data are available to throw light on the issues that are the emerging focus of inquiry. A number of ethnographers and filmmakers realized quite early the impact that film could have on qualitative research. As a way of documenting vanishing cultures, we call this salvage ethnography, but also as a way of communicating visually to Western audiences what it's like to live a dramatically different life in a different environment. And that gave birth to a subgenre of documentary filmmaking that we call ethnographic film. Uh, these are primarily non-commercial, documentary films that are used as supplements to more traditional ethnographic research. Getting back to our question, if the goal of ethnography is to document and analyze experiences and beliefs in the real world, how can a piece of fiction be ethnographic? Now, there is another genre of film called ethnofiction, in which typically non-professional actors play fictional characters but characters that come from the same ethno-linguistic, economic, and cultural backgrounds as they do. And while they're usually scripted or partially scripted, the films are often shot in the actors' real communities as well. So ethnofiction is fiction that directors use to tell a story that's compelling in a fictional sense and educates the audience about some aspect of people's lives in a culture or subculture in the real world today. Obviously, Outlander can't really do a lot of those things. I mean. 
18th century Scotland isn't a place that we can exactly visit, and it's fair to say that most of the locals have been dead for at least two centuries. So what do I mean when I say that Outlander is an ethnographic show? On the one hand, as a piece of historical fiction, the first two seasons of Outlander rely heavily on establishing the culture and setting of the 18th century Scottish Highlands. With Claire as an audience surrogate, we meet a large number of supporting characters who occupy various positions in the Highland clan system, ranging from lowly cotters or unlanded peasants to the highly connected and powerful taxmen that supported the estates of their chief. We spend one episode traveling the entirety of the chief's estate, for example, learning about methods of tax collection and microeconomic struggles that teach us about the daily lives of commoners. In that sense, the show's ambiance is more than historical. It doesn't approach the great events or personalities of history directly, but instead represents them through what historians might call a subaltern or microhistorical lens. Viewing history from the ground up, so to speak, putting the audience in the shoes of commoners or the lesser nobility as they go about their day-to-day -day lives, all cast against the backdrop of the great events of history. And I'm not going to focus uh, very much on the historical accuracies or inaccuracies of Outlander's first two seasons. Uh, some more historically inclined channels have already started to do that. Links in the, the description. But the show's emphasis on ambiance and subaltern cultural details is very similar to what you would see in ethnofiction. On the other hand, the second reason that I see the show as ethnographic has to do entirely with how Claire's character is framed as an audience surrogate. Claire is very much an accidental ethnographer. Her experiences place her in a radically different culture, but one to which she's able to adapt due to linguistic and historical knowledge and a unique skill set. And the longer she lives there, the more invested she becomes in learning and understanding how 18th century Highlanders see themselves and their place in society. She then cultivates trustworthy local informants, and over time, begins to understand more and more about the culture and politics of the time. Claire also begins the narrative as an outsider. She's literally referred to as a Sassenach. Oh, I hope you didn't take offense. It only means Englishman, after all, or at worst, outlander. But as she learns to understand a bit of the language and lives in and contributes to the broader community, in her case as a healer, Claire is gradually accepted and even admired by the locals. Nevertheless, she is always still a Sassenach. And as a consequence, she wears two identities for most of the first two seasons, in the same way that she wears two wedding bands. Anthropologists might refer to these as emic and edic, or insider and outsider perspectives. For the most part, Claire becomes culturally fluent in many aspects of Highland culture, gradually coming to identify with it over and against the culture of her native England in the 18th century. But she's still capable of seeing the Highlands with the eyes of a 20th century observer. And, broadly speaking, this is one of the goals to which ethnographers aspire, to be completely accepted by a community giving you access to emic cultural pathways, while at the same time keeping your edic, scientific mentality intact. So while Claire would very much be an imperfect ethnographer, she's far too judgmental and self-righteous to retain any objectivity, her successes and failures to gain acceptance in the 18th century can teach us a lot about what it's like to conduct qualitative research and to integrate into a different cultural environment. In that sense, Outlander absolutely is an ethnographic show, and historical fiction, though different from ethnofiction and ethnographic film, can still demonstrate a number of very informative ethnographic qualities. So going forward, uh, we'll be using aspects of Outlander to teach a whole variety of ethnographic theories and methods. Um, and we can do it with almost any topic, research ethics and the idea of justified intervention, or gender and the accessibility of research environments, but also more basic concepts like reflexivity and realism, emic and edict perspectives, and participant observation. There's just a lot in Outlander to talk about as a social scientist. Um, until then, though, if there's any particular topic you'd like me to discuss, feel free to drop a comment in the video below or like and subscribe to help the channel grow.